Welcome to lesson 18, the book of the apostles. I love talking about the book of the apostles, the book of Acts, as we see in the New Testament. Here we have the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And in the New Testament, we start with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Amazing. Those four Gospels, we read about Jesus and how he walked around here on earth. And all four Gospels end up with Jesus dying and how he rose up again. And then after the four Gospels, we have the book of Acts, the book of the Apostles. There is a very special book because the book of the Apostles is the only historian book we have from the early church here in the Bible where we read about how they was living the life of Christ, how they obeyed the call of Jesus. We are now living after the cross. We are now living in an amazing time they were prophesied about many, many, many years ago. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he said, it is finished. What is finished? What was finished? Or what had begun? The old thing had finished and something new had begun. We, when you understand it, we are living in an amazing time today. A time they were prophesied about many hundred years ago. For example, Ezekiel and Jeremiah, 400 years before Christ, they prophesied about the time we today are living in. Ezekiel was prophesying this in Ezekiel 11, 19 to 20. I will give them an undivided heart and put a spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. Listen to these words. These words Ezekiel prophesied 400 years before Christ is something we today are living in. In the time Jesus was walking on earth in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they did not experience it. Why? Because they were still before the cross. When Jesus walked on earth, he could not give them the new spirit Ezekiel was prophesied about. But after he ascended to heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit down here. And we are living in this exciting time. We in Christ can be forgiven. And we in Christ can get a relationship with God where we can know him. In the Old Testament, it was only for a few. It was only for the prophets and a few select people. But now in the time we are living in, God will pour His Spirit out on all flesh. Last time we looked at religion. Religion tried to change a person and make a person look nice outside. But Jesus, He is giving a new heart. Jesus is putting a new spirit in us. Jesus is doing what we have just read about. And one thing I really love about the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we see this being fulfilled. We see in the book of Acts how the early church after the cross was preached in the gospel. We also see how they responded to the gospel they heard. We also see how they got born again. Book of Acts gives a lot of examples of pictures of how the early church was obeying Christ. How the believers was obeying Christ. How they actually went out in that harvest that was ready. How they found that person of peace. For example, Acts 10 with Peter and Cornelius or Acts 16 with Paul and Lydia. There is clear, clear examples in the book of Acts how they continued the work of Christ. The book of Acts is like a mirror where we see how the early church was living, how they obey Christ. It is like a diary. There was a time in my life where I looked at my life and I was a Christian and I loved Jesus and I was radical and I came in church and I did a lot of good 
findes der. På den her start, så siger det Book of Acts, and my life did not at all look like a Book of Acts. I dressed up every Sunday, I went to church, I was even doing a few preaching in the church, and I was helping the church. But I was not led by the Holy Spirit like we read here. I did not lead people to Christ like we read here. I did not baptize people more than the Holy Spirit like we read here. I did not cast out demons and heal the sick like we read here. So I had religion in one hand and I had the life in the other hand. And there was a mistake somewhere. And I believe the mistake is not found in the Bible. The mistake is found in our life. So I needed to change something. I needed to change something and I did it. I changed something in my life. And now my life looks so much more like what we read here in the book of Acts. One of the things I needed to change was obedience. We need obedience. Faith is obedience. You cannot have faith. You don't have faith if you don't have obedience. Try to imagine if I'm standing in the middle of a road here and there's a truck coming from my side. I don't see the truck. The truck coming with full speed toward me. And you are standing there on the side road and you see the truck and you shout, Torben, move, move, a truck is coming. And I look at you. I believe you. I believe you are real. I believe you exist. I believe in your words and stand still. No, it don't make sense. Why? Because if I believed in you, in your words, I will move. I will not be able to believe what you are saying and stand still. Yeah, only if I want to die. But if I want to survive and I believe in you, I need to move. Why? Because to have faith in you is not to have faith that you are real, that you walk on earth. No, it had to have faith in your words. Like to believe in Christ is not only to believe that he one time lived, it is to believe Christ, believe his words. And if we believe his words, we move, we obey his words. That is the only way we can actually show that we believe. Faith without obedience is dead. And, and, and it's so clear, I want to read uh, following from the book of James. And when you read these words here, it's so important to understand that when you talk about works, it's not talking about works by the law. We, it's not about trying to earn our salvation, because we cannot. It's not about trying to obey the law and then we obey so good that we are saved, no. It's not talking about works by the law, but it's talking about obedience slash works by faith. And this is what we need. James 2, 14, 26. I want to read this. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but not have deeds or works or obedience? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accomplished by action or obedience, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me then your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his action was working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed Believe God and it was credited him to righteousness and he was called God's friend. 
You see that a person is considered righteous by what he do and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodge to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without obedience, works, deeds is dead. This was not my words. That was the Bible. Faith without obedience, works are dead. Faith alone is dead. We are not talking about faith plus works by the law, but we are talking about real faith that lead to obedience. If you believe in Jesus and Jesus say, a truck is coming, move, then you move. Why? Unless you want to die, then you move. Now Jesus don't say a truck is coming, Josh. He said many other things. And what we read here, we need to obey. And when we start to obey the call of Jesus and start to step out of his words, our life is going to look like the book of Acts. Why? Because this is the same yesterday, today and forever. But if you don't obey Jesus' words, if you don't have true biblical faith in Christ and therefore don't obey, of course your life will look like this, while the book of Acts will be like this. So take some time and really go through the book of Acts and see their life, how they obeyed the call of Christ. See how they were preaching repentance, baptism in water and baptism with the Holy Spirit. As we said last time, you don't see a sinner's prayer. Many of the things we do today in the church, we don't see in the book of Acts. Many of those things we do today in the church, we don't see in the book of Acts. And sadly, many things that have been done in the book of Acts, many don't see in the churches. But we, there is a reason God gave us the word. Because it's not our religious that's, religion that's the truth, it's the word of God. So, I encourage you, keep it simple. You have religion in one hand, you have the book of Acts in the other hand. What is correct? Don't build on your own experience. Experience can change overnight. We need to obey this. Until now, we have been talking about how the harvest is great and how the workers are few and how we need to be sent out as sheep among wolves and there's persecution out there. What do we see in the book of Acts? We see that the harvest is great. We also see there's few workers. We even see how God used persecution one time to get the sheep out amongst the wolf. <laughs> and we see that when they're out there amongst the wolf, they experience persecution. They paid a price and it was not easy. Paul experienced stoning and many other things, was thrown into jail. But he also could testify that Christ was with him. When he went out there, Christ was with him. What do we see? What have we been looking at? We have been looking at how you find a person of peace. And how when you find that person, as Jesus said, you go to the house and you sit and eat and drink what they serve. And then you dare heal the sick and preach the gospel. <laughs> and stay there. And this is what we see in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a confirmation of the call Jesus gave us in Luke chapter 10. You don't see fine, nice churches and program in the book of Acts like we do often today. You see raw and real life. The Spirit of Christ working in His body. And this is what we need to do. This is what we need to obey. Next time, we are going to continue and look at the Gospel. But I want to start here with the book of Acts, because the book of Acts is, a conf is where we really see how they are preaching. Book of Acts is where we really see how they responded to the preaching. The book of Acts is where we really see the biblical life, like how they got born again and all of that. So next time I'm going to use more time where we are going to look at the gospel of the kingdom.
where I will give you the big picture from the beginning to the end and how people and what people need to do to be born again and what you're going to see when we show the big picture is that how, what people need to be born again maybe go against what you have been told maybe go against your church tradition sadly it it i think it do because we have come so far away from the bible but it will not go against what we read in the book of acts that's why I will take I took this time in this video to really focus on the book of Acts and what that life was all about and start to next time and just read through the book of Acts and then see if that fits with your life today. It should do that. God bless you and see you next time where we're going to continue looking at the gospel. Bye bye.